Hi there, Alex here at MixingLessons.com. In this video, we're going to have a look at Luna. Luna is a DAW by Universal Audio, and I've been using Luna for about two weeks, and I've done two mixes on it. And so in this video, I'd like to give you a bit of a review on what I've seen so far, and give you a bit of a walkthrough of what's included, some of the features, uh, some things that are unique to Luna that I haven't seen in other doors. We'll also have a look at some of the plugins that you get with the paid version of Luna, and we'll also have a listen to some examples as well. Before we dive in, if you're somebody who records and mixes music, I've got three PDF guides that I think you'll find really helpful. I've got an EQ cheat sheet, a compression cheat sheet, and a vocal recording guide. And you can get all three of those completely free by heading over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. Okay, so if you head over to Universal Audio's website, you can download a copy of Luna. And it comes in two different versions. So there's a free version, and then there's the Luna Pro Bundle. And what the Pro Bundle gives you is a collection of really nice plugins, or what they call Luna extensions in some cases, and I'll show you what that means as we go through the video. So there's various EQs, compressors, channel strips, tape emulations, and some virtual instruments as well. Or you have the option of a free version, but when you download the free version, you get a 30 day free trial of the Luna Pro Bundle which will give you everything in the paid version for 30 days to try out. The free version also gives you a 30 day free trial of the Neve analog summing plugins as well. And so this is gonna be a review of the Luna Pro Bundle. Okay, so as I started to mix with Luna, one of the first things that struck me as I was just sort of getting used to the software was how nicely everything's laid out in this program. It has a really intuitive design. Things are all easy to find and located in very logical places. So for example, if you need to make changes to the click track, that's up here. If you need to alter the buffer size or the playback engine, those are down here. Quite often to have control over those things, you need to go into menus or you need to go into a menu to make sure that certain options are available on the screen to be able to control those things. Luna also makes use of several different, what it calls workflows. So these are different options that you can open up depending on what it is that you're doing. So there's a recording workflow, a MIDI workflow, an editing workflow, and a mix workflow. And that gives you different options depending on what it is that you're doing in the DAW at that time. So they've struck a really nice balance between having everything easily accessible and easy to find without the DAW feeling cluttered. It all feels very streamlined. It doesn't have quite so much going on and quite so many options as some DAWs do. And yet all of the features that you would expect to find in a DAW are there and they're all very easy to locate. The routing of tracks is also very straightforward. So if you scroll down, there's this output section and you can simply select where tracks are routed to. So here you can see we've got some drum tracks. Each of those is routed to this drum bus channel and then the drum bus channel is routed to the main output. And because these tracks are grouped, if you go to the output of just one of the tracks in the group, it will assign all of the tracks in that group to the same output. So it's all very straightforward. It all works very intuitively. The mix window itself is also really nice. Having things like tape saturation and analog summing all available in the mix window, rather than having to open individual plugins is a really nice feature. And then you also have this console section. So here you can view the channel strips of different tracks or the bus compressors. And then obviously there are insert points. So if you want to add things like reverbs or other EQs or compressors, any other plugins that you have, you can do those on the insert points. But it's all really nicely laid out and accessible from the mix window. Same for the sends. So here I'm sending different tracks to the reverb plugin and I can control those directly from the mix window itself. And so this is something that I really like about Luna. The fact that everything's very logically laid out, things are very easy to find. You don't have to spend too much time going into menus to find things. Most of the things that you're gonna need are accessible from either the mix window or the edit window and everything feels very natural and very intuitive to work with. There are also a lot of really nice, convenient little features in this DAW as well. So for example, having a tap tempo button on the startup screen for when you're creating a new session, I thought was a really nice feature. I also like the fact that when you create a new session, it automatically creates a main output channel. In the groups, there's an all tracks group. So that's useful if let's say you have tracks of drums, bass, guitars, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, vocals. 
whilst you might have each of those different groups of instruments in its own group, sometimes you want to do something to every track in the mix at once. Let's say, for example, you wanted to look at the volume automation for every track. You could switch on the all tracks group, go into the volume automation view for one of the tracks, and it will do that for every track in the mix. And so I found that a really useful feature as well. Something else you can do is you can save different versions. So you can start a new version. And then you're able to move between the different versions via this drop down. And so that's really useful if, let's say, you're doing mixing for a client and they want revisions, you're able to save different versions of the mix and refer back to older versions quite easily. When you're listening to your mix, you're also able to bypass the extensions and the inserts or all of the processing that's going on in the mix. That's something that I found really useful to be able to bypass all of the EQ, all of the compression, the reverbs and so on, and just listen to the original mix and compare that to the progress that I've made in the mix. So bypassing the extensions, bypasses these tape emulations, this analog summing, and these console emulations. And then the inserts button bypasses anything that's on an insert point. And of course, all processing bypasses both. And another little feature that I really liked was this global section here. So here you can see that something is clipped in the session. We have this global clip light. And if you click that, it clears all of the clip lights anywhere in the session. Now, I think you'll find this DAW particularly easy to use if you're somebody who has been using Pro Tools regularly. So there are quite a lot of things that are laid out in very similar places to Pro Tools, like this groups window here. And I also noticed that a lot of the key commands for Pro Tools also work in Luna. So if you want to create a new group, you can press Command and G, just like you would in Pro Tools. To switch between windows, you press Command and Plus, and that will switch between the Mix window and the Edit window, just as it would in Pro Tools. The key commands to export your track are the same, so Option, Command and B will open the Mix Down window where you can export your track. So if you're somebody who already uses Pro Tools, I think you'll find Luna a really natural and easy DAW to start using. Now, while I was mixing with Luna, I did come across a couple of things that I didn't like so much. One thing I noticed is that when you import audio into a session, Luna automatically creates a new track for each of the pieces of audio that you're importing. That's fine, but there are instances where I think it can be more useful to have the option to import those tracks into a clips list and then add them into your edit window manually rather than automatically creating new tracks. And I also ran into a little bit of confusion when I was trying to export some tracks out of Luna. So if we reopen that export window, on the one hand, this is actually quite useful. You can choose to export everything that's going via the main output. So that would be your whole mix. You can choose to export each of the buses. So that would be really useful if, let's say you had a drum bus, a guitar bus, a vocal bus, and you were sending something for stem mastering, for example, then you could bounce each of those groups of tracks. Or you can export each of the tracks individually that are in your session. Now there are various options here for when you're doing this bounce, like bypass effects for example. But where I ran into some confusion was this preserve mono tracks option. What I wanted to do was I wanted to bounce each of the individual tracks in the session. I didn't want the bounce to reflect the pan position, but I did want the bounce to reflect the automation that I'd done on the tracks, the level automation. And what I found was that by clicking this preserve mono tracks button, it would only bounce the tracks without the level automation that I'd put in place. So what I think this option must do is it must bounce the signal from a point before the fader. So it doesn't take into account the pan position, but it also doesn't take into account the level of the fader, which is obviously altered by any level automation that you've done. So the only way I could find to bounce each of the individual tracks in the mix, but keep the automation, was to manually set each of the pan positions back to the center and not select the preserve mono tracks option. When I did that, it gave me each of the tracks with the level automation, but I was only able to bounce each track as a stereo file and I would have rather bounced them as mono files. So obviously that's not a huge problem and it could be that I've missed something but I think that this preserve mono tracks option could be perhaps named a little bit more clearly. 
Okay, so having covered some of that basic information about the DAW, let's talk a little bit about the workflow or the signal flow inside Luna, because this is something that's very different and it's not something that I've come across in any other DAW. So we've already touched on this a little bit, but Luna is quite unique in that it emulates the kind of workflow that you'd associate with working on a console. So as soon as you start a session, it will give you a main output channel. And that main output channel will already have analog summing added, a tape machine, and a bus compressor. Similarly, when you add any instrument tracks, you'll choose which tape machine you want to use, and whether you want to use the API channel strip or the bus compressor in the console section of the channel. When you add a bus track, here, because we're using the free version with the 30 day free trial, we have the 30 day free trial of the Neve summing. But otherwise, if you had the pro bundle, you could use the API summing. And again, you can choose which kind of channel you want for the console, whether it's the channel strip or the bus compressor. Also, each instrument channel that you add to the session will have the tape saturation option here. And each instrument channel also has the option of the API channel strip, or the bus compressor. And so as you're mixing, anything that you send from an instrument channel to a bus for an instrument group, for example, will go through the analog summing. It will go through the bus compressor or the channel strip, depending on what you've chosen. And then everything will move to the main output channel where again, it will go through analog summing, the tape machine and the bus compressor or the channel strip. And so this really emulates the kind of signal flow that you would associate with a console. Of course, you don't necessarily have to use uh, these channel strips or these bus compressors. You can load other plugins onto the insert points, just the way that you would in any other DAW. But having these options for the analog summing and the tape saturation and so on added automatically is very different to any other DAW that I've used. Normally, in most DAWs, you would add an instrument track or a bus track or whatever it may be, and they wouldn't have any plugins or any kind of emulation or anything loaded onto them automatically. And then you would add your plugins manually one by one. And so this is quite a unique way of working, but I think it's a really nice way of working. Having this tape emulation and the analog summing and the bus compressors and so on gives things a really nice, warm, punchy sound, much like you would associate with mixing on a console. And so what I've done is I've made just a very, very quick little drum mix just to give you an idea of how things sound running through these channel strips, running through the drum bus channel and then running to the main channel. And I'm also sending the tracks to a reverb channel as well. So there's a little bit of reverb coming from the plate reverb plugin that is included in the Luna Pro bundle. So what I'll do is I'll play you a little bit of this and then I'll bypass all of the processing so that will switch off the analog summing, the tape, the channel strips and the bus compressors. And it will also turn off the reverb. So you'll hear a before and after. We'll start with all of the processing in, then I'll take it away and you'll just hear the raw drum tracks and then I'll put the processing back in just to give you a bit of an idea of what this kind of processing sounds like. So that's just a quick mix of some drums. It only took me a couple of minutes to dial those settings in before I started recording this video. But I just wanted to give you a bit of an idea of what things could sound like running through these processors. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a deeper look at what you get with the API Vision channel strip extension in the Pro Bundle. So you have a section with a line amp where you can set the gain level, a high pass filter and a low pass filter. In the dynamics section, you have a gate or an expander, and then you also have a compressor limiter. And then finally you have an EQ and you can switch between two different kinds of EQ. 
Now, let's focus on the EQ for a moment, because again, this is another area where I think that Luna is quite unique. Here we have a four band EQ. And of course, you do also have the uh, high pass and low pass options there as well. But for a lot of people, this might be quite a different way of working. For a lot of people, they might be a little bit more used to the kind of stock EQ that you might get in something like Pro Tools, where you'll have a graphic display that shows you kind of what's going on. Some people might also be a little bit more used to working with the kind of EQs where you can control the steepness of the slope in the case of a shelf filter or a pass filter. Some people might be more used to having control over the bandwidth via a Q control. And that kind of EQ is generally bundled in with most DAWs. Most DAWs have that kind of EQ as their stock EQ. You don't get anything like that with Luna. Luna is much more focused on these kind of really nice analog emulations. Now, I think that this still gives you plenty of control. I think it's a great EQ, but it's kind of personal preference. Some people will love working with this kind of plugin. For other people, they may prefer the kind of EQ that you would get as the stock EQ in things like Logic or Pro Tools. Same goes for the compression. If we look at the attack time, you have three options fast, slow, or medium. For the knee, you have the option of hard or soft. And so there isn't that kind of stock compressor that you would associate with most DAWs, where you're able to dial in the exact millisecond value of the attack time, for example. Now, of course, if you have those plugins, you already own them, you can use them in Luna. There's nothing to stop you adding those kind of things as an insert point and using other plugins. But Luna doesn't come with those kind of stock EQs and stock compressors that you would associate with a lot of DAWs. Now, it does come with some other EQ and compression plugins, and they're really, really nice EQ and compression plugins. We have uh, some Pultec EQs and a collection of LA-2A style compressors. And this is all really iconic stuff. But again, they're not the kind of EQs and compressors that you might associate with a stock compressor that you would get in most DAWs. And so if you're into the idea of embracing these kind of emulations of analog gear, then this is all really good stuff that comes bundled with the pro version of Luna. But if you have a preference for the kind of stock EQ and compressor that you get in most DAWs, where you're able to really fine tune the settings on everything, then whilst you can certainly buy those and use them in Luna, they don't come bundled into Luna to begin with. There isn't that kind of stock EQ or stock compressor. And the exact same thing goes for the reverb. You get this really, really nice plate reverb. But again, if you're used to a DAW that gives you a reverb plugin, which has a hall setting, a room setting, a church setting, and then also has mechanical reverbs like plates and springs, and gives you all of these different options for your reverbs, Luna doesn't have anything like that bundled in. Instead, what Luna gives you is this one reverb, which is a plate reverb, but it's a fantastic sounding reverb. Same for the delay, the Galaxy Tape Echo. So while some DAWs will give you tons and tons of different plugins, here you get fewer plugins, but the plugins you get are really, really high quality emulations of very desirable analog equipment. So when you consider the kind of plugins that come bundled with the Pro version, compared to some of the plugins that you would get bundled with most DAWs, and when you look at the console options and the way that you have the tape saturation built into different channels and the analog summing, I think Luna is a really unique DAW. And if you're looking for something that does a really, really good job of emulating this kind of analog or console workflow and the kind of sound that you would associate with working on a console, then I would highly recommend that you check it out. You can get the Pro Bundle on a 30 day free trial, which is what I'm using at the moment. But in the next few days, I'm going to invest in the full paid for version and I'm going to be using Luna a lot more in the future. So I hope you found that useful. Hope you found it interesting. If you've got any questions or if there's anything I can help you with, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. Don't forget to head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads for that free Q cheat sheet, that free compression cheat sheet and that free vocal recording guide. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.